This is Lost Coast, a quote-unquote performance test for CS2, and if you ask me, it's already one of the most stunning and realistic things I've ever seen in Counter-Strike. In combination with CS2's new water, it lags a lot. It actually lags so much it makes my computer scream. Lost Coast was made by importing models. I've been told these are assets from Unreal Engine 5, specifically Nanite assets, and most likely a lot of them. I don't know what that means, but holy crap it looks good. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I want to show you some of the insane stuff coming out of the workshop made with CS2's new editor and engine, and how I've been playing CS2 every single day and actually having fun despite never playing a single game of matchmaking. For example, Lily Q's completely destructible Minecraft map, only possible in CS2. Almost every block in this map can be broken both with weapons and explodable TNT, and some pretty ridiculous physics. These elements come together to create a completely unique experience, with tons of variation and replayability. And while it wasn't easy, Lily stated on her Twitter this took over like 100 hours, she is apparently releasing the map and entities, so others can do the same thing in less time. And she even linked several servers so you can play in your region. But here is the point. Something like this and as functional as this could only be done in CS2. See, each of these blocks is an entity. CSGO maps had entity limits, smaller entity limits, that prevented something like this from happening. Three Clicks Philip showed this difference when the game came out. And I want to show you a really extreme example. This is ZE Faco Reactor. And as you can see, it is filled with barrels. An absolutely disgusting amount of barrels that cannot be avoided as you move through the map. But a map like this is meant to be played with 64 players. Yes, the server and engine are capable of calculating not only hundreds of physics objects, but the interactions of players with those objects in real time. Now to be fair, this was possible in CSGO as well, and was tested, but never at the same scale. The same level of chaos in Faco would have probably crashed in the older engine, just like Lily Q's Minecraft. But CS2 also has larger geometry limits, and to showcase that, we have to generate another seed. Minecraft Sakura. Not destructible, rest in piss, but nonetheless an insane map made by several mappers from China. This was probably created in Minecraft and then partially imported into the CS2 engine. The intricacy and small details of the map, in addition to the lighting and emissiveness, pandas, and just generally an ambience and level of detail that, while maybe possible in CSGO, could not be done with the same performance and stability. So how are mappers able to do all of this? And only a few months into CS2's life cycle, we just got the tools in June of last year. And remember, Counter-Strike's older Hammer editor has gotten the reputation of being frustrating and extremely time consuming to learn. Well there's one man who's seeking to change that perception for CS2. Towards the end of last year, Chris Bryant went on a crusade, trying to convince people that CS2's mesh editor was awesome. For example, Chris did a speedrun of completing a room giving himself just two hours and only stock materials and hammer geometry. He starts off by laying out the room, building the walls and columns. His video was pretty fast, but he also uploaded the full speedrun link below, then makes stuff like the railings, just makes a tube, extends it, and then mirrors it, making columns and their accents great, and then adds lighting and textures. Obviously, this guy is good at what he does, but two hours to make something like this? That's crazy to me. He went on to show tons of these quality life improvements that CSU offers, Duplicating objects. It's just bam, 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 bam. Creating a usable mesh. Then we have to name it because it's going in our asset browser. Hopefully, your team agreed on a style guide. Now we're gonna go ahead and export it. I'm just gonna... Or fixing textures. Even I could do this. But why should you care about the editor? Less than one percent of us will ever open Hammer, let alone publish a map. Well, it's because it increases the rate at which community content can be made and their quality. Since the launch of CS2, there have already been nearly 4,000 maps built and published. There were like 125,000 in CSGO, but 4K is still a lot for a new engine and game, and all of them capable of using CS2's new features. And here is the point of the whole video. All the new, fun content for CS2 is either in the workshop or community servers, objectively, and I feel like this is being completely slept on. As opposed to lack of content, 
performance issues, cheating, and a lot of the backend stuff like plugin and scripting support are the real issues Valve is dealing with. It is way more likely that Valve will fix these issues than suddenly start pumping out maps and game modes. They, they haven't done this for a long time. Instead, if you're looking for frontier content and new experiences in CS2, you need to go to the community. And I understand cheaters is one of the biggest problems in CS2 that might never be solved, but when someone is cheating in a community server, an admin can just ban them. And on some servers, you could just type report and an admin will literally spawn in and ban the cheater. But it is true that to the average new player, maybe like you, community servers are just way too out there, too big of a context switch. Y'all want to get into the game and just play what you already enjoy and to a certain extent, the community browser that, let's just face it, makes it really hard to find real and populated servers sometimes. And this incentivizes new experiences, with many servers, brand new servers remaining empty at the bottom or otherwise impossible to find. And not only is it hard to get into a server, it can be jarring to figure out what's going on when you even get in. So this is what I've been playing that you might actually enjoy if you're used to regular matchmaking. Number one, Zombie Escape. Huge lobbies. Basic premise is shooting zombies in the head. Then you figure out with your team how to beat the map while still defending the horde. And if you get knifed, you switch teams. Easy to learn and hard to master. I play this every single day. This was the game mode that Minecraft Soccer was from. Number two, Jailbreak. I play this occasionally, especially when lobbies are full. It's super fun. Uh, you and a group of prisoners have to escape while uh, fighting CTs and a warden that tells you what to do. It's sort of casual and silly. It's very fun though. Number three, Surf. And if you've been here for this long, you deserve it. For a long time, Surf was plagued by ramp bugs, this bug that stops you on the ramps. Apparently, a fix for ramp bugs has been implemented on a bunch of servers. It's not perfect, but it works. And Surf has like 40 maps now. I'm about to make a tier list on all of them. Be on the lookout for that. And if you like this, you'll probably enjoy this video describing that problem and our potential solutions for it. Thank you so much for watching and bye. Good luck. Have a good time. Bye.